the famous pipeline track has well and truly been blocked off. Do you reckon this is the best way to deal with this problem? I don't think so. The Toyota Tundra is coming to Australia and I think that's going to be the biggest towing capacity car Toyota ever plans on bringing to Australia. We recently tackled the deepest river we've ever successfully crossed in Cape York. You can probably tell on camera, the emotions were high. Welcome back to another episode of Beers in the Shed. And this episode, we come to you with some breaking news, mate. Recent track closures in Lithgow, where it's likely going to hit next and what you can do to stop it from happening even more. Mate, let's get into let's it. Get this into is going it. to be a big one. First things first, mate. Crack a Cheers. Colony, mate. Cheers. Well, we're in our good mate Shuey's shed up yep. here in sunny Queensland, mate. Not, not sunny Queensland. No, nah, she's storming. There's, you probably see a bit of lightning. Maybe you can hear a bit of thunder in this shed. So I apologise for that. Jessie might get scared and scream mm. like a girl, but uh, we're going to get into it anyway because, mate, this is something that a lot of you guys at home have been asking us for mm -hmm. in the comments from the last Beers in the Shed and on social media. Of course, we're talking about recent track closures, mm. particularly in Lithgow, in the Gardens of Stone, state conservation area, and there's one track that has recently been shut, the famous pipeline, pipeline track, mate. I've done that with you before, it is a ripper track. We wanted to actually find out a little bit more as to why that happened. So two things, mate, I've been speaking to some local four drive clubs about mm -hmm. what's been going on there, and I also managed to go out to Lithgow the other day to have a look. So we'll cut to Jock in the field, and then we'll come back and chat about it. All right, sounds good, mate. Behind me is the top of the famous pipeline track. And as you can see, it has well and truly been blocked off. You've got concrete blocks and steel cable at the top here, as well as signage, the same bollards down the bottom and cameras to stop any access. And it's pretty gut-wrenching to be honest. I myself have been driving this track for probably over 15 years and I'm sure a lot of you guys at home have been driving this track for a long time. I cut my teeth learning to full drive out here in Lithgow. So to see this, it's pretty sad. And one thing that's interesting about this track is over the time that I've been lucky enough to drive it, I don't think it's really changed that much in terms of difficulty. Because it's largely rock, it means that as four-wheel drives are coming up it, they're not wrecking it as much as some people would say that four-wheel drives have a huge environmental impact. This track itself, I guess the argument that I'm getting at where they say four-wheel drives are wrecking the environment, I'm not sure if it's particularly strong for this track. Now, I wanted to dive a little bit deeper as to why they've shut Pipeline in particular first up. And in the management plan for this entire area, which you can find online, it states that key members from groups that use the area will be consulted before any major changes. And this being a major change, I actually did a bit of digging to see who was consulted. I contacted 4Drive New South Wales and ACT and spoke to the president, Craig Thomas, who was wonderful and generous with his time. We had a good old chat about why this actually happened. They fought for a long time, almost two years, to try and keep this track open, but unfortunately, this is the outcome. Now, one of the main reasons that Craig reckons Parks wanted to shut Pipeline Track in particular was due to how easy it is to access. You can literally turn onto this track from State Mine Gully Road, and he reckons they were arguing that a lot of people with incapable four-wheel drives or weren't quite equipped for the track were getting stuck up it and it was causing time and money to get them off the track and could be dangerous for people who aren't equipped. Of course, solutions were offered such as putting obstacles at the start of the track as almost a litmus test saying if you can drive over this obstacle, you're capable of driving the track much like they do in America. But solutions like that weren't really heard of by national parks. And the conclusion they came to was the best solution was to put big concrete blocks and steel cable here, which I get that you've got to protect the bush as much as you can, but I don't think this is a viable solution, particularly because you'll get people probably wanting to do the wrong thing and wanting to drive around it. Now, if you see this, don't do that. There are cameras here now. It's been blocked off, and unfortunately, this track has been shut. But I just don't think this is a good long-term solution. There needs to be a better dialogue between management of places like this and the people who access it. Particularly when you consider in this management plan, it mentions that hiking, that mountain biking and trail riding are all gonna be endorsed for this area. Why can't fall driving? If you're putting in the money and infrastructure to put this stuff here, which wouldn't be a cheap exercise, why can't we look at putting in the infrastructure to manage the tracks, say with fencing or certain access or making sure you're part of a club or options like this to try and mitigate people using the tracks all the time? Because I don't think 
locking us out of our own backyard is a very good solution and it's definitely not a long-term one. And I guess the next evolution for this is they're probably just gonna grade it if people keep driving around these bollards, which no one seems to have done yet, but it's almost like a red rag to a bull seeing this sort of stuff. There's gotta be a way that full drivers and management of places like this, like national parks, can get on the same page. Let's take a leaf out of Victoria's book, for example. Seasonal closures and regular track maintenance means that full drives can use the tracks and in the season where they're more likely gonna get chopped up when it's cold and wet and rainy, they're shut off and you're not allowed to use them. Why can't we look at options like that? It's just sad that this is the best solution. I don't think it's a very good one personally. And what do you guys reckon? Let us know. Do you reckon this is the best way to deal with this problem? I don't think so. I guess Pipeline at the end of it is a lesson. And Craig Thomas and the team at 4Drive New South Wales and ACT have let me know of the next area that's in the firing line for getting changed to national parks. And if that happens, we're gonna lose a lot of access. Let pipeline be a lesson because stuff like this is going to keep happening unless we do something about it. We can all do a better job and it starts with the basic things like picking up your rubbish, looking after the tracks, not driving like a peanut, and above all, banding together. Four drive 24 seven as a body can do more to get the message out to you guys as to how we can stop this stuff from happening because seeing this is just sad and I don't think it's a viable long-term solution. Well, there you go, Jesse. It went out to Pipeline to see it for myself. And it's just pretty gut-wrenching, to be honest, to see mm. a track that I cut my teeth on over yeah. 15 years ago has now got big sandstone blocks in front of it. Yeah, it's pretty devastating, mate. And, of course, there are some things that uh, have been done behind the scenes, but this seems to be the way that area in particular is going. Yeah. Whilst that's happening there, I reckon it's definitely an important lesson to learn so that we can move on to other areas mm -hmm. and make sure it doesn't happen there because there's another one that's not too far away mm -hmm. and if it goes the same way, we're in big trouble as four-wheel drivers. Are, yeah, it's going to be a sad day for four-wheel drivers this next one. Big time. Of course, we are talking about a project that uh, is being worked on getting off the ground at the moment. It is called the Great Koala National Park and it's essentially proposing around 175,000 hectares of state forests joining up to 140,000 hectares already in the area of national parks. Now, this is in the area around Coffs Harbour, uh, Kempsey, Nambucca. Four-wheel driver's paradise, really. Four-wheel driver's paradise. It's the mecca mm. of four-wheel driving. And the plan is basically to take that 175,000 hectares of state forests, join it with national parks, and create a big koala reserve. So and there are some positives to this big koala national park that they're doing, particularly for koalas. We love koalas. We're not <laughs> starting a war against koalas as four-wheel <laughs> drivers. We definitely want to see them survive, particularly because they are endangered. But what we're saying is in this big plan for the national park, they're looking at putting in more hiking tracks, mm -hmm. more mountain biking tracks, horse riding as well. Why can't four driving be one of them? Oh, yeah. The infrastructure to put in there, you're going to be spending a lot of money to turn all this stuff in for you know hiking and mountain yeah. biking and stuff. The tracks are already there. Yeah, the four-wheel drive stuff is already there, yeah. So if you put the infrastructure in to you know, limit access to certain areas such as you know fencing around tracks so you can't drive off lines and things like that, managing tracks like they do in Victoria, maybe even with seasonal closures if it yeah. gets to that, you know, having rubbish bins and things like that mm. so that four drivers can go out there, they can enjoy the tracks, they can learn their vehicles, do some technical wheeling. Yeah. And I think there can be a better dialogue moving I think, forward. Yeah, I think we could meet halfway. If they needed to close a few for the koalas, whatever they could, but leave a couple open, like you said, fences there, or put it, if they're putting infrastructure for all these other hobbies, Put a little bit in for four-wheel drivers. You know, I, think, I think there's a bit of give and take on both sides, but I think definitely. we could definitely try and come to an agreement, I reckon. Yeah, it's time for four-wheel driving to be seen like it is in the US. It's mm. an outdoor hobby that people love doing because mm. we love the bush. Everyone watching at home, they didn't buy a four-wheel drive because they hate the bush. They bought a four-wheel drive because they want to go out there with their vehicle, mm -hmm. learn its limits, drive, enjoy it, and be with their mates. And that's what it's about. If we can't do that... Yeah. Yeah. So from that, mate, I reckon rounding it out, it's important to talk about what you can do, what we can do, and what you guys can do at home. So first things first, keep an eye out for updates on the Great Koala National Park on social media. As I said, there are some good things coming out of it, and that's good, but as long as we can have a dialogue so we don't lose access for four-wheel driving, I think that's really important. Keep an eye out on our social media because now that we've started this, I think it's really important we keep the momentum going. Mm. 
We've lost pipeline and I reckon we as 4Drive247 and you guys at home can do more to make sure this does not keep happening. Yeah. Of course, keep an eye out on 4Drive New South Wales and ACT's social media pages as well for updates. And of course, mate, most importantly, you can contact the Environment Minister's office, the Honourable Penny Sharp, and you can voice your concerns. We'll leave her contact details down there for her office. Let her know that as 4Drivers, you want the opportunity mm. to keep access out to the bush, particularly with such a massive national park. Mm -hmm. I think the only way we're gonna do this is get a dialogue going yeah. so we don't lose access, mate. Yeah, really, really definitely. important. So keep an eye out on all those social media pages and of course, jump on to the Environment Minister's contact page. We'll leave all the details down below and get onto it, mate. Yeah. If you'd like to contact the Minister for the Environment's office, we're going to leave a template letter that you can copy and paste into their contact form in the description. Right, yeah, mate, that was a lot of information we had there, and if we all band together, hopefully we can make a bit of a change. Something quite exciting I heard the other day, I've done a little bit of research on, is the Toyota Tundra is coming to Australia. Huge. One thing I didn't really know about this, mate, was people are basically calling it a Cab Swap 300 series. Now, I thought it was a completely different car, but doing some more research, it pretty much is a Cab Swap 300. Yeah, mate, that'd be interesting. So, I guess, 3.4 litre petrol v6 big truck little motor yeah yeah it's going to be an interesting one mm. basically a four, well, i guess a four and a half ton brake yeah. towing capacity big towing capacity big car little motor it's got a 10 speed auto so i'd be keen to drive one and see how it goes on paper it's all meant to be great but that is a lot to tow four and a half ton yeah that that is quite heavy particularly with a petrol v6 i know graham talks about the y62 tows mm. very well but i guess yeah. That's not towing four and a half ton. Exactly, four and a half ton yeah. is a lot, I guess. But and I think uh, that's going to be the biggest towing capacity car Toyota ever plans on bringing to Australia. So that's that's a pretty big thing. Like people are hauling some big stuff over here now, so that could come in quite handy, I reckon. Hauling's becoming a thing now. They did mention that um, it's more designed for on-road stuff. There's no factory diff lock options in yeah. it. Uh, and I'm be curious on the price too, mate. I imagine yeah. it's going to be priced quite high. I would go out on a limb and say that it's probably going to cost more than the 300 series. I'd imagine. Yeah. But, I reckon. Uh, 150, give or take a bit. That's that's going to be my guess. They've got to be converted to right-hand drive, and that's getting done down in Melbourne at Walkinshaw Group. So that could jack the price up a bit. Another interesting thing I found out is they're claiming 12 litres per 100. So if they are that good on fuel, mate, it could even out the cost after a very long time. You need to do a lot of Ks, mate. 12 litres <laughs> oh, yeah. per 100 sounds like a bit of a stretch. I mean, I my SAS Hilux does 13 litres per 100. Yeah. Obviously, it's modified, but that's a big... Mm. Big car, and I suppose built in North America, brought over here, converted to right-hand drive, mm. and then sold. Apparently, that whole process, of course, is being overseen by Toyota. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it remains to be seen. If they get it right, yeah. I reckon the Tundra could be a very popular thing exactly. in Australia. Yeah, mate, definitely, and time will tell. If we're lucky enough, I reckon we might try and get ourselves one of them to test when they come to Australia. I reckon that'd be pretty cool. Maybe I could wrap the coat one green, <laughs> make it like the pony and drive it on some tracks. Maybe, that, that, could, that cool. could be it, definitely. <laughs> this Ranger here has been turned into the ultimate trader truck and it's been given away for free. Grays have kitted this thing out to be the perfect work truck for you guys during the week, but it's still definitely tough enough to tackle some tracks on the weekends. Up front, it's got the off-road animal bull bar. It's also got a set of side steps as well as a scout roof rack. The back of the Ranger is fully kitted out from TC boxes. We've got the tray here, we've got the canopy, we've got under tray toolboxes, drawers in there, so organising all your stuff is super easy. And of course, the suspension's been upgraded with Formula 4x4 suspension, including the F4R shock absorbers. Down here, we've got a flash out of wheels and tyres from our mates at Prestige Tire and Auto. And we've got you covered for communications as well with a brand new GME XRS Connect. The front of the range is kitted out with a Recon winch and a set of Vivimax Ultra Lights from our mates at EFS. And we've got you covered for all your 12-volt needs, the Red Arc Go Block and Power Dock. So that means it'll charge as you drive, but it'll also power things like your fridge and your camp lights. Finally, moving inside the Ranger, we've fitted up with a set of Razorback seat covers. These things are essential for looking after the inside of your vehicle. To enter, hit the link below. Make sure you fill in the form, register with Grays. Now remember, this competition ends midnight, October 31, so don't miss out. Right, mate, next up, we need to talk about the Frenchman's Track because we recently tackled the deepest river we've ever successfully crossed in Cape York. That was that was loose, mate. That was took a lot of planning and risk assessment to do that safely. Definitely, definitely. Of course, we didn't just drive straight in and nah. board the gate. Lots of planning. And of course, if you haven't seen the episode, Go back and watch it and then come back and listen to this yeah. because, uh, mate, there's lots to get through there. Oh, heaps. And it should be an awesome episode to watch too. Definitely. It's fun to make. Definitely. And, of course, it was right on the limit. Probably mm. 
maybe a smidge. Just above the limit, but yeah. we got it done. We got it done. And I guess it's important to mention, mate, that we are have been doing this for a long time mm-hmm. and we had a long chat about it, had a look at it, had the recovery gear. Mm. We sent a vehicle through that was probably most likely to get across first. Yeah. We had winches, we had front and back. We made it as safe as possible. If yeah. something was to go wrong, which it definitely could have with how risky it was, even if something went wrong, we still would have been safe and could have yep. got out of it safe. For sure, for sure. And I guess then once we kind of got into the swing of things, using Jesse's vehicle as the anchor point and then moving it forward, not really a snatch pull, no. but just like just pulling a, it just forward a, as an anchor So point. the vehicle would keep going forward and not float down as far as you and me did. Yeah. Um, it yeah, was like a sure. well-oiled machine by the end. It was. I was hooking him up, unhooking him, towing him. Justin was in, hooking the other things up. You were, you were communications on the corner. Like, we had it down pat. Definitely, mate. And it was funny because driving the Parenti through, the first vehicle through, that was, as far as I'm aware, and in fact, I could probably hand on heart say, judging by the fact there were no tracks on the no other side. No one had been through. The first vehicle through for the season. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I don't, you could probably tell on camera, the emotions were high. Oh, uh, yeah. I was, I, was, I was peaking. Yeah, but definitely, definitely. Got the vehicle to the other side. And the funny thing is, because the camera crew have quite expensive cameras, they understandably didn't want to walk them across to the other side. So the only people who'd been over there were Josh mm. from TC Boxes and I, and the camera drone was there. We had a couple of GoPros. So once we got over there, it was kind of Josh and I going, oh, well, better figure this one out. Yeah. <laughs> so these guys were sitting on the bank for, I reckon, about 40 minutes yeah. or so, whilst we winched the Parenti through the, because I was just... Oh, this, yeah, you was just stuck straight out of the creek like I was, yeah. Yeah, by the last car that came through, that was like a, mm. almost and a And Josh highway. had to go... Josh yeah. climbed probably... A, we had every single winch extension we had out, and Josh, we couldn't even see him, and he'd come back with scratches all over him. One of my favourite... Josh and I bonded on that, on that river because one of my favourite things about Joshy is he'll be having fun, having a good time, and enjoying it with a big smile on his face. But if you go to him, Josh, I need a recovery point mm. over there. Job's on, he'll go... And yeah. he'll just disappear into the bush. Yeah. He won't come back till he comes done. back with the end of an extension and clicked your wig on it. You're like, what? Yep, How? he's done. And th- we were working the Parenti hard to get it through mm. that bog. But we made a bit of a track. We got it through safely. And then I reckon by your car got through. It was, was a little bit wrench for me. Yeah. I was pushing lots of slop like you were. And after that, we kind of went, oh, okay, this is how it wants to run. Yeah. This is how it wants to plan. Mm. And we went through from there. So pretty successful. It could have gone very wrong, mm. but we had a plan. Yeah. We plan the plan and we dive the plan, and I think that yeah. works quite well. I've never, I said to Jock when I got to the other side, I've never been so happy to be stuck in mud before. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was scary, floating down, hitting that big rock on the side. If you've done Frenchman, you know the rock that I hit, and you'll see it in the in-car. And then I got stuck, and it was a sign of relief when I got yeah. stuck. I think I think even before, when I got the parenti stuck on the other side, same as yeah. you, I just took a moment and yeah. had a couple of deep breaths, because yeah. I was like, oh man, all right, yeah. regather, breathe, yeah. slow down, cowboy, all right. Let's get it and done. we sort of almost replanned it after I got across because we had winches front and back try to make as safe as we could. The Parenti takes on water so it doesn't float as much. My car probably take on the next amount of water. All the other cars are pretty modern, bar Justin's. So I definitely floated a lot more and I got there and I said to Jock, I think we're going to have to replan this. Our winches aren't quick enough. The water's flowing faster than the winch. That's when we come up with the towing idea and it was much safer, we got everyone across. Big time, big mm. time. And we live to tell the tale. Now, of yeah. course, that was based on a lot of experience between the crew. We had some good cars, we had good recovery gear. We got it done. And yeah. uh, there's one thing, that dinner we had on the other side, we cooked some beautiful steaks, Liv cooked up some fish. Yeah. That was amazing. That mm. was such a good night, Cam. It was such an the awesome feeling, trip. Once we, the final car was the camera car, we got them across, such a good feeling. It was almost a better feeling than completing the tally, just to know we were first through, we got everyone across safe. It was touch and go at the start, but we totally achieved it. Definitely, mate. And um, the Parenti too. I mean, I know all I do is harp on about that vehicle. <laughs> and uh, I bonded with it oh, on that trip. There was one point, though. Uh, you might notice that in throughout that scene, I had a bit of a cut on my head. Mm. We had a bit of a moment. It was a behind the scenes. I smacked my head on one of the uh, radio mounts on the side of the Parenti. And I saw stars, mate. I yeah, had a cut he, on my head and I was... He wasn't super happy. Let, just, let me just tell you that. You it, can imagine the rest. I was having fun. I think it was the Parenti's way of saying, hey, just just settle down a little bit. We've got mm. a big day. You don't need to be mucking around too much. Yeah. Just just focus. So let's make my... I think I've still got a scar on my on my forehead from it, it too. It kind of looks, looks like a Harry Potter one, mate. Yeah. You've done well there. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Give it here, Malfoy. I'll knock you off your broom. <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, well, Jesse, mate, I'm pretty sure that covers off our hot topics for this episode. But yeah. if there's anything we missed about the Frenchman's track, about track closures, or anything you want to let us know, leave it in the comments below. There was heaps from the last episode, heaps on EVs, heaps on track closures. When are we going to talk about more? And we just have. Yeah. So chuck them in the comments below. We actually do go through and read them. Well, mate, now it's time to get into my favourite section of the shed where we go from... Our shed, well, this is our mate Chewy's shed, yeah. but into your shed. And uh, we've got some crackers mm -hmm. this episode, mate. So first up, we've got this one from Daniel Page. Now, shout out to Daniel and his son picking up rubbish at the Picolbin Lookout. This is a beautiful, is so beautiful awesome, yeah. part of the world. And unfortunately, some grubs go up there yeah. and leave rubbish. The and if you do that, is, grub. Yeah, they've gone up there for lunch and they're picking up rubbish, which is great. We really appreciate it. But... Come on, guys, they shouldn't have to be doing that. And no. the people that are leaving this rubbish there, I've also got a four-wheel drive to get there. So yeah. it's our people. You need to pull your heads in, I'm going to say, and don't leave stuff like this behind because that's be exactly why stuff gets gated and closed up. Yeah, and like, don't go to a beautiful lookout and be like, oh, this looks nice. I'm going to throw my rubbish down there. Just, exactly. You've obviously raised him right, Daniel, mm -hmm. so I appreciate it, mate, and keep up the good work. Mate, this next one is super cool. Have a go at this mini Jeep and look at him sending it flat out through that mud. That's so <laughs> sick. How cool is that? Yeah, I wish I had a Jeep like that one. I had a lawnmower, mate. That's so much cooler than a lawnmower. I have one of those, you know, those red cars with the yellow roof? Oh, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Towed it behind a motorbike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, mate, that is so cool. Look, look at it going mud bogging. That's hectic. Now, speaking of mud bogging, <laughs> speaking mate. Speaking of mud bogging, yeah, we yeah. got this bloke. We've got this rig from Raiden underscore 4x4. So he's got a stockish 45. Beautiful vehicle there. He's even got the white steel he's on, yeah, mate. That's pretty, really cool. It's very pure crew. It looks pretty tidy, not much rust. And he's doing a bit of mud bogging <laughs> oh, in the old girl. Up this hill. Uh, if that's a 2H, which I assume it, it might yeah. be, uh, he's probably giving it all three horsepower to try and, and get left, up right, the hill. Steer, he's yep. got the hang away, of it. guys. He's down pat. He played on there too. Good on him. Look, that he's is... got a tyre and a jerry can on the back. That's all you need. That's something you don't actually see very often these days. A P-plater with a stockish car just out there having fun. Some of yeah. these young blokes these days are taking it way too far for yeah, a P-plater car. Just quickly, if you're watching this and you're a young fella, you don't need all the mods in the world to go out there and have fun. Awesome little rig, that 45. That's cool to see a young fella getting out there yeah. and having a go. This next one is from Wild Touring, and I actually saw this online. Pretty crazy. They're in the middle of the Simo, and a whole upper control arm popped off this trot. And have a look at this video. In the middle of the Simo. It's not a good spot. Look at that. Oh. Not a good spot for that to happen, Poor bloke. That is a stitch. CV out, top ball oh. joint ripped out, bottom one off. Wow. I don't even know how they got out of there, but that... It's not a good spot for that to happen. Well, I hope they got out, but at least that's an easy way to justify aftermarket upper control arms mm. for your next mod. But Maybe uh, even a SAS. Do people SAS Tritons? Yeah, I'm sure they do. Nothing frightens a Triton, especially a SAS Triton. Mm. But uh, yeah, mate, Wild Touring, that is epic, and I hope you got out of the Simo mm. safely. This next one is uh, from Toby, who's 13, and he's made a mad little Lego off-road truck with a caravan. Look at that car a axle, we've got flares. That is cool, man. Now, he's that's either awesome. tried to make Graham with the Y62, or that's Jesse with his BMW GU towing his new caravan, mate. Yeah, that could that's be, actually, cool. yeah. Well, I love seeing these Lego figurines that people the are submitting. The detail in there is unreal, too. Really cool. So, job. Toby, if you're watching, good on you, mate. That is really cool. Here we go. This is a bit of a rig. You know, not many people actually like these cars, but I've got a bit of a soft spot for them. I've got a pretty unique one of these, and I actually like the shape of them. It's a Scotty's D22 Tourer. Yeah. And um, I, mean, I don't think there's much on that that hasn't been modified. Yeah, it looks very tidy. Mm. I like it a lot. I, I reckon that's a cool book. There's a lot to be said. D22s in particular, they're quite underrated. They I are, yeah. cool vehicles. They're pretty strong, too. Like, they're still torsion by front and stuff, but the CVs are pretty staunch, and jack them up, put on big wheels. That They're a budget car these days, too. Get you into the into the hobby pretty cheap, I reckon. Yeah, definitely. Could be a good option. All right, next up, mate, we got a fail from Reg Whittle. So, Triton's bogged at the beach with the tide coming oh. in. Oh! Look at the he... trailer on uh, maybe a boat. He's, He's proper stuck. He ripped the bull the bar bull off. bar's off. Oh, no. Bull bar's ripped off the chassis. That's a big boat, too. He's yeah. proper stuck. Maybe you could wait for the tide to come in, unhook the boat, and tow, tow the cart with the boat, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or maybe when the tide comes in, just push forward with the boat, see if it... Mm. But that sucks. Hopefully, he got that Triton out of there. That looks proper stuck. And when you're in a recovery like that, that's uh, where things can get quite dangerous. There's a few people standing around. Sometimes people might not be paying attention or something yeah. like that. So that's where things can go wrong. Hopefully, Red Twiddle, if you're watching, mate, hopefully everyone got out of there safely. The bull bar might be off that Triton, but I still don't reckon anything about that Triton is frightened. No, definitely not. Definitely not. Mate, speaking of cool Lego builds, have a go of Jack's one here. 
He watches our show every Thursday night and likes to build Lego full drives that we drive. Mate, this thing is an absolute weapon. Look at the size of the tyres. That's so cool. That's definitely a proper off-road yeah. rig, that one with big tyres. On, on your jack, jack, mate. That is awesome. Well, mate, there has been some sensational entries for this beers in the shed. Pretty I have a tough one to judge. It, there is, mate. There is. I reckon for uh, the fail, I've got a clear winner in mind, and I don't know about you, mate, but I reckon it has to be this Triton from oh, Wild. That Turn. was going to be my pick for sure, and I reckon they're going to get themselves a Forex Mertz pack. They're going to need a couple of four inches to fix that. I reckon. I reckon after they did that, they probably had a couple of cold <laughs> beers. But uh, They could have used them to problem solve, maybe. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Mm. So while touring, there is a Forex merch pack coming your way, mate. My next pick for the kids is going to get a $50 snatch voucher. And I reckon it's going to go to young Toby, the bloke who made the patrol and the caravan. I'm going to call it a patrol. Yeah, it looks like a patrol. It looks heavy. Yeah, the detail is awesome. There's even people at the, at the camp table. He's got stuff up on the roof rack. Toby, mate, there's going to be a $50 snatch voucher coming your way. Spend wisely. And if mum and dad want anything, tell me where you spent the voucher. <laughs> and finally, mate, for the rig, I reckon it's got to go to young Raiden 4x4. Not only is he out learning the capabilities of his old 40, but he doesn't have heaps of mods on it, and yeah. he's just getting out there anyway. getting anywhere. out there and having fun, and that's that's the best part about it. Sorry. I reckon he's well-deserved that 4x pack. Now, of course, if you've seen this and you've thought, gee, I'd love to get my four-wheel drive in there, or you saw a fail out on the mm. tracks, you'd love to show it off, or you've got a young future four-wheel driver and you want to get something cool they've made yeah. on the show, mm -hmm. Jesse, how do they do it, mate? Jump on the socials, Instagram, Facebook, I think even TikTok these days, and hashtag 4 drive 24-7 rigs. Four wheel drive 24 7 fails and four wheel drive 24 7 kids. And you might even see yourself on the shed show and could win yourself a couple of prizes. Definitely, mate, definitely. Righto, Jesse, before we wrap this one up, mate, let's talk about what we've got coming up. Mate, we've got a fair few things coming up. You guys saw me take the GU to Kate and forget that it was my good car. Well, good news for you guys. I'm taking it to Tassie. I'm probably going to forget it's my good car within the first 100 metres of the first track. That's going to be a good trip, mate. I can't mm. wait to see that it's one. It's going to be a big clean-up, I reckon. A big clean-up, indeed. I... Speaking of clean. Well, clean, very clean, yeah. Opposite end of the scale. <laughs> Opposite end. I've been spending a lot of time in the shed working on the Red Lux. Lots of stuff going on. That episode is coming up, I think, when this goes live, I think it's coming up next week. That's so, cool. I reckon I'm going to watch that, mate. That thing's a work of art. You sent me some photos. It looks so mint. You're doing such a good job. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Of course, a lot of hard work behind the scenes. A lot of panel beaters who've uh, been helping me out with that. So yeah. shout out to them for all their hard work. But and there's a bit of a special one. Reason Jock is in Queensland, mate. What are we doing? We're driving some pretty special things, aren't we? Yeah, unique vehicles. That's what we're going to say. But it's a good bit of fun. I'm pretty keen to see how it goes. But for now, mate, I reckon uh, we... Have another cold one in the shed. Listen to this uh, beautiful Queensland storm roll through and mm -hmm. uh, take it easy, eh? Yep, sounds good, mate. Cheers we'll to catch you. Catch you next time. Cheers to you.